brought this? And we told them we didn't want it. We're not interested. It looks like a, a prison. We, yeah. we say we didn't do anything wrong. Why should we be in prison? Don't want to live like we're in behind barbed wire, maybe like a prison camp or a concentration camp. Last couple of years, there's been several um, infiltrations to steal things. A couple of st cars were stolen and, and some horses. This is a place where we don't usually lock our doors at night. We leave, used, used to leave, some people still leave, the keys and the ignition in the car at night, so in the, in the morning it's easy to find it. It's, it's not like there's no crime here. So um, over the last year and a half, there have been a couple of infiltrations, uh, and a couple of times the police caught the thieves, and it was Arabs from the neighbor, neighboring villages. And we said, we said to the army, to the police, this is not good. This is not gonna. This this has to be stopped. It's not going to end yeah. good. It's going to end bad. This land belongs to the community. Uh, it's a beautiful place. We've picnicked here many times. I've come here many times with my family to a picnic, uh, to walk, to uh, be alone a little bit. Yeah. You know, it doesn't feel, uh, doesn't feel, he has never felt, and even right now, it doesn't feel dangerous, it doesn't feel ominous, it doesn't feel scary. It's, uh, it's so peaceful. It's, it's so, so peaceful and it's so quiet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in one, in one moment, a beautiful life was, uh, was taken, was lost. Harris was missing. You know, we hadn't, his wife said he had gone out to be by himself a little bit, but he hadn't been expected to come back at about four. He didn't come back. So, you know, it was like, say, 8 o'clock at night, 8.30. It was foggy, it was raining. Nobody sort of knew where he is. So we thought, actually, that he maybe he slipped, he fell. So we, you know, we split up and we sent out search parties. Search parties, you know, we, dro we drove around in different yeah. places. And one of, the, one of the friends, one of the couples, this is the place of the Red Sox. One of the uh, one of the couples uh, went out and found them. They found them first. They they drove here and the first they saw blood and then they oh, it was yeah. very dark. It was very foggy. Found them about nine nine thirty at night. Yeah. So. Terrible for his wife. Why three little children? Three little children. How yeah. old was he? He was forty. Forty. His yeah. uh, the, his oldest boy is eleven, and he they have younger twins, six six. And oh eight. yeah. On a boy. But um, you know, again, we we are not living here because it's standard of living or because it's comfortable. Although it is comfortable and it's beautiful and we love it, but we're yeah. here because this is our home, home, very deep home. Religious Zionism is an understanding that the connection of the Jews to this land is part of our spiritual tradition and the return of Jews to Israel is part of the deep spiritual connection that is built in to the very soul, that's the imprinted in the souls of every Jewish person. This place is um, Batayin, this area, is an area where, according to the Bible, Abraham wandered and camped and passed through. And um, the Jewish people began from God's commandment to Abraham, go forth into the land and walk the land, and walk the land between Hebron and Nablus and Shechem. And as the point where Avram, Abraham settled in a place called Migdal Eder, which is, the archaeologists say, about a mile from here, about two miles from here. So that's a very, very real and deep connection for us to be walking and living in a land where our forefathers and foremothers walked and lived. We're close here to Bethlehem. Rachel is buried. We're not far from Hebron, where Abraham and Sarah 
and the other patriarchs and matriarchs were buried. That's very real for us. That's very alive for us. And the prophet spoke, uh, Ezekiel 36, if I don't, if not mistake it, but the prophets, uh, all the prophets spoke about the return to the land and being rooted in the land, Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel. And so this is very powerful for us. My grandfather, who grew up in um, Lithuania and emigrated to the United States and died in the United States and never came to Israel, never made it to Israel, but he used to tell me, and this is not hundred year, hundreds of years ago, I remember he used to tell me when I was a kid, uh, he used to say, uh, you one day you'll go and live in Israel and that'll be, in, he used to cry every time he would read something that was going on in Israel, cry sometimes from joy and sometimes from sadness. It was very real for him and his, for his father and his father and his father and his father. So generations are... Generations speaking, and, and right? millennia and, and decades and centuries and, uh, and have been longing for it and praying for it. Three times a day, every time Jews pray, we talk about returning to the land. I believe that we are living in a time of, of revelation and a time in which amazing things are happening in the world and uh, there's uh, some sort of messianic process happening. It's still an amazing wonder to us that we appreciate and we praise God for that we were privileged to live in the times of Jews coming back to the land of Israel. Once again, people returning to a place that is theirs, a place that is ours.